Thank you so much for tuning in to She's All Over the Place with Kiriaki. That's me. Hello, hello. I hope all is well. We are still in National Poetry Month, and、uh, I had a beautiful poet from Colombia on. You know, I was always creating and doing things for World Poetry Day, National Poetry Month, and she created the verse first. And Ana Maria, I said, Hey, do you want to do a collaboration? Uh, she has some poets with the verse verse, and、uh, I'm like, let's do a curation together. Any poets that you want to have、um, for the show,、uh, just have them slate their name, the name of the piece, and and read a piece or two. So、uh, this is what we'll be hearing today. Really excited for you to hear the words of international poets. Some links will be in the show notes. Make sure you're liking, subscribing, following.、Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Because of you, we are in the top percent out of all podcasts. So that's. Really, really awesome rock and roll. I am in the Catskills right now. I have, ne- I've never been here. I've, oh, I'm here now, but I've always wanted to come here for years. It's above New York City, up, um, upstate, and I'm here. I've been hiking and、uh, being in nature and just really reprioritizing my life,、uh, my health, and just not on social media a lot. And、uh, been running and twice a day I've been. Running, working out. Nike, my friend Nico, she's gonna be on the podcast. She has the fashion Dow, and、uh, she has the Nike app, and they have all these. We've been doing boxing workouts and endurance, and it's free on the app. So I definitely recommend checking out the Nike app. I'm a Nike girl through and through from day one, and. By being here, she's reconnected me with that, and I've reconnected her with some things, and、um, I'm really grateful to just be reconnected with myself and nature. So make sure you're in nature and taking good care of yourself. Yeah. So with that being said,、um, yesterday I went in the jacuzzi. There's a heated pool. Oh, there's a gym, so I'm going into the gym, doing workouts. Yeah, just、uh, getting mentally fit and physically fit,、uh, and making sure my、um, physical health is my number one priority right now. So thank you for your patience, understanding. She's all over the place. Is really all over the place, <laughs> and I appreciate you going on the ride with me. We do have giveaways every single episode, so make sure the link below. You can、um, enter into the giveaways. Make sure you do. I appreciate you tuning in, sharing this episode with one person, and、uh, yeah, rock and roll. Here's an exciting update on Culture Kids. I, as you know, produced and directed a comedy project called Culture Kids, and it's the vibes of Web three and the NFT culture. As you know, there's been some episodes of Culture Kids on the podcast, and I was going to take it and put it into all the international film festivals. And now, for the last few months, my industry, the entertainment industry, has been slower because of the potential writer strike. That's supposed to be May first, so we'll find out if there will be a writer strike or not. But a financial advisor, a financial producer, advised me since it's a short, it's probably better for me to pivot and just release it. So. My partners over at Rad NFT TV, we're going to be releasing Culture Kids, the comedy project, nine minutes long on Rad NFT TV. I'm going to release it、um, on a couple other Web3 platforms, and I'm going to release it on YouTube and YouTube Shorts, and it's going to be released everywhere. So you're going to be able to see it soon. I'll have the link in the show notes. I just wanted to share that updated news with you. I'm really excited to finally. Let it out, as you know or may not know. We premiered it at Art Basel in December 2022, so it's been <laughs> six months. I've been patiently waiting to, you know, hone it in, but I'm just gonna release it, and I'm really excited because the talent, my friends, and the people who are in the project, they deserve to be able to share it with their friends and see it. They've seen it, but they deserve to be able to, you know. Share it with people, and I'm excited for you to see it. Yeah, so one step at a time. But、uh, I'll have more news for you soon. But we're, we're finally releasing Culture Kids, the comedy project that I created. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Today I'm going to read a piece by Maya Angelou, a phenomenal woman. It's the number one poem in the whole wide world, and I read it 12 years ago and put it on my YouTube, so it's there. You know, 10 years later, here we are, and I'm gonna read it. And I'm sure the way I interpret it and the way I recite it will be completely different because I'm in a whole different situation from when 2012 to to now. <laughs> uh, but it's one of my favorite poems in the world. So, in honor of Maya Angelou, National Poetry Month, I will read this piece by her, Maya Angelou. Phenomenal woman from and still I rise. Copyright 1978 by Ma Angelou. This is the piece. Phenomenal woman. 
pretty woman wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size, but when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please. And to a man, the fellows stand or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honey bees. I say, it's the fire in my eyes, the flash of my teeth. The swing in my waist and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say it's in the arch of my back. The sun of my smile, the ride of my breasts, the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud when you see me passing. I ought to make you proud. I say it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need for my care. Cause I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. This piece is read by Sheila Darcy, AKA Sketch Poetic Impermanence. In the depths of sorrow, we often find a path that leads us to the divine. For in our grief, we shed our masks and connect once more to the source at last. It is in our pain that we remember the beauty of life, its fleeting splendor. And as we mourn what once was dear, we are reminded that love is always near. Though we may feel lost and alone, we are held by a power greater than our own. And as we surrender to the flow, we find our spirit dancing with the unknown. For in the darkness, there is light. And in the silence, there is might. And as we honor our grief and pain, we find our way back home again. Let us embrace our fears and tears and allow our hearts to release the years. For in our grief, we find the key to unlock the door to eternity. Hi, my name is Anna Maria Caballero and I'm going to read Room. Room. I'm a different woman in every room. In the kitchen, efficient operative as fork, quiet in the bedroom, tiptoe to avoid discourse. The weight of telling you everything is fine, nothing happened. In the bathroom, confessional, thoughts bend into curve, hungry is the dip that concludes my spine, the volume of forward of woman who stays. In the nursery, nostalgic, I summon the past, a love of distant animals, whales. I recall a birth in the city, but corridors and orbits circle me further back to a village fit for a child, to music recitals where grandmothers pace with wet hair and always radiola wails Argentine protest songs in the living room watchful caution girdles my methods 
I observe a strawberry I drop on the floor, upon which another might slip. Everything is hardwood. Formica shelves new, but coated in dust. Parked in the driveway, generous. I prepare the wits and gifts to present. Believe I will sleep unaided, formless and flexible like the babe in my belly, like the shape of my tongue about to commit. No one is lonelier than the woman who is loved. Hi, my name is Justin Tagg, also known as Devoid in the NFT space. And these are two pieces from my Poetry Cards collection. Her shadow came first. In those days, the steps to my apartment ran on the outside of the building, right next to my bedroom window. After a break-in, my landlord had placed a trigger-happy security light outside that activated with even the slightest movement. When anyone took the stairs, the light would explode on, projecting their shadow onto my bedroom wall. So, when I knew you were coming, I'd stand in my hallway, looking out into the darkness, waiting for the light. And when it finally came on, I watched you arrive. Shadow first. Cigarette box library. He doesn't know it yet, but I write too. Hurried, uncultured thoughts in the seams of cigarette packets I've hidden around the house. Once in a while they turn out all right, and I think, cool, now I'm crying. Then I remember it wasn't as romantic when it didn't all rhyme. I often dream of throwing it all away, getting up in the dead of night and visiting all my little hiding spaces, rescuing each packet, one by one. I drive it all out into the woods and start a forest fire with these stories of me that no one else will ever read. Watch them burn. Maybe I'll throw my passport in there too. Cut my hair. Change my name. I might like to be a French girl in a black and white movie. Yeah. I might like to be Cleo. I might like to start again. But I won't do any of that. No. Instead, I'll be back tomorrow. Pencil in hand to make sure my cigarette box library remains. Flowers for my favorite poet. He sits without the energy to wave away the rain, gripping a chewed up pencil, too shy for the permanence of pins. This park shakes out strangers like the leaves on turning barren trees. He scribbles on a legal pad jettisoned with raindrops. He writes toward what he cannot reach, wedged between the highest branches of an oak. He tosses aside an umbrella like an analogy in the pursuit of what is instead of what it's like. It started as a bench tycoon and bloomed into a sonnet, a crown spouted from blunt lead, but he crumpled it up instead. Flowers for bad poetry. When I open my old notebook, an ink-smeared meadow of cringe unfolds. How I confuse poems for unidentified flowers, purple spirals poking up their stems, too short to punctuate the space above. The angst of pistols shooting at an unnamed sky. The petals of stanzas plucked at random. Diction is scattered as the pollen. How did I miss the funeral? Were these flowers always dead? A ditch dug with a shovel of steel cliches, cold underneath the shade of every wrong I incurred. A hot air balloon flies off, fueled by words like excruciatingly and them. But every time I try to flee this field, I think, maybe I'm the balloon. Maybe I'm the dirt or the grave digger. The shade, the stem, the petals, the pistols, even the sky. But really, I'm a worm, gardening on the knee pad of time. Hello, my name is George Pistana. Uh, I go by the name Odd Writings, and I have a poem I'd like to read. It's called A.I. Agaia. Now, uh, a couple things to know about this poem before I start. It's a word unit palindrome, uh, which means that if you start at the beginning of the poem and read it forward word by word, or if you start at the end of the poem and read it backwards word for word, uh, word by word, then it sounds sounds the same, except for the punctuation. Of course, the punctuation <laughs> only makes sense when you go forward. And uh, it is also an Eliz Elizabethan sonnet, so uh, it follows the rhyme scheme A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. Uh, except that I, I moved the volta to the middle because I figure since it's a palindrome poem, you can you know, flip around so that the middle is kind of where you turn. Because of all these constraints, it, it can sound a bit odd, but I'm hoping that it's still listenable. Okay, here we go. I'll, I'll go ahead and read it. AI, a Gaia. Knowledge, all of body. College, city of dreaming spires. Travel chest, shoddy. Age of discovery, seeming. Hires tread, board above. Stage reaches, decks below. Flow waters, locks, 
love. Love locks, waters flow below decks, reaches stage above board, tread tires, seeming discovery of age, shoddy chest, traveled spires, dreaming of city college, body of all knowledge. Now, uh, to get a little bit more out of this, you can go to uh, oddwritings.com uh, and then you can click on NFTs at the top and then click on AI Agaia. And then if you scroll down, to a little section that says, I read the poem, I'm confused. <laughs> I'll have, a, I, I put a bunch of notes in there uh, of ways, you know, there, there's, there's more than one way. There's no one way to correctly interpret a poem. I mean, there's lots of different ways. So I hope you get something from it. But uh, the notes I have here will maybe give you a, a, few, a few clues, uh, things to think about. One thing I'll go ahead and mention is that the City of Dreaming Spires is a, is a euphemism for Oxford University. Um, and City College is a euphemism for Newgate Prison. And uh, prisoners used to be executed there. So it's, you know, you can think of it as meaning death. I'll, I'll leave it to you to have fun with it. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. So I started a new Instagram for the podcast. She's all over the place podcast. So make sure you give me a follow there. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Kiriaki, over and out. <laughs>